since the dawn of the Benning era. The one thing that we had always been hearing that I, unfortunately, like many of you, ended up believing was that the team was trying to quote-unquote get younger. That's the thing, right? Hey, we gotta get younger, we gotta get younger assets, more prospects, more picks, we're trying to acquire all this stuff, and believe me, man, that's the goal. We've got all these older guys, the Kesslers, the Sedins, the Bieksas, and the Burroughses, and all of them. We gotta get younger. That's the thing. However, when it comes to that getting younger type sentiment that we have been seeing, there's been quite a sizable amount of research done by some very smart people on social media as to whether or not the Canucks actually fulfilled that. Now I know it's really easy for all of us to go out there and say, yeah, no, Benning didn't do a good job at getting younger at all. But when it comes to the magnitude of how poorly he actually did in this respect, let's go over on a Cody Severson's Twitter account because what he does is he writes pretty much a short essay about how bad this was for Vancouver. It started out on this tweet right here by Thomas Trance on October 26, dating back one decade to 2012-2013, the Vancouver Canucks have amassed 763 points in 754 games. That's 26 the best of the 31 NHL teams that have played at least four NHL seasons over that time frame. Only Ottawa, Detroit, New Jersey, Arizona, and Buffalo have won less. Now, that's not something related to the draft picks. Strance is just kind of talking about how bad the Canucks have been over the span of the past decade. And for a team that was trying to go all in and trying to have their cup contending window as often in the 2010s as they did, this sort of stat definitely isn't one that you want to see actually be the case. Only Ottawa, Detroit, New Jersey, Arizona, and Buffalo have been worse than Vancouver over the past decade's worth of regular season play. But Cody goes out there and replies to this trans tweet saying this, I wanted to pile on on the 10-year window fun. Since 2012-13, the Canucks have made 67 picks out of a possible 70. 23.88% of those picks, 16, were made in the first two rounds, ranking them 27th in the league. The second fewest second round picks made over the past 10 years, 6 out of 10 to Edmonton's last ranked 5 out of 10. What this pretty much means is that the Vancouver Canucks, with the 70 possible picks that they had, they only had 67 actually made, and 23.8% of them were made in the first two rounds. What does this mean? Well, if you go over to the NHL drafts and you acknowledge that, okay, every team gets a pick per round, there are seven rounds, meaning that if you have two out of seven being in the first two rounds, that means that you're probably looking at about a 28.5% as the regular. That's the norm. That's what it should be. If you don't trade away any draft picks, 28% of your draft picks in the span of 10 years will be in the first two rounds. For Vancouver, though, they don't have 28%. They have 23%. What that means is the Vancouver Canucks actually gave up more first and second round picks over the past decade than they would have had initially. Sure, they acquired a few here and there. There was the Ryan Kessler trade where they got the first to select Jared McCann. They had a few other trades thrown in there. They didn't get another first. The last time they had two firsts was 2014, and then you had 2013, which, I mean, okay, Corey Schneider, Bo Horvat, and Hunter Shinkarek as well. You gotta remember him, don't you? But that was at the start of this 2012-2013 era that we're looking at here. I feel like if you go out there and you cut it off from 2015 up until today, it gets even worse than that, because the Vancouver Canucks have traded away so many firsts, so many seconds, and they're 27th in the league when it comes to percentage of draft picks over the past decade, which have actually been used in those first two rounds. The follow-up tweet to Cody says this, Teams that have drafted less than the Canucks in the first two rounds over the last five years, Boston and Tampa Bay. That is all. Teams that have drafted the same amount in the first two rounds, Calgary, Pittsburgh, and St. Louis. Teams that drafted more? Everyone else. This is mostly to illustrate how important draft capital is. Tampa drafted nine players after winning the Cup. Detroit has made 61 picks since 2016. Carolina had drafted 40 players as a top Eastern team. Minnesota drafted 10 players in the first two rounds over the last three years. Here are the last three drafts in the first two rounds. 
10 picks. Buffalo, Detroit, Minnesota, Montreal, and Ottawa. Nine picks. Anaheim, Chicago, Arizona. Of course, we're taking a look at the first two rounds in the last three drafts, meaning that almost every team has at least six. You start out with six. That's the baseline right there. Dallas, they had six picks. Nashville and New York, hey, they had five each. Colorado, Boston, they had three, which means that they actually gave up half of their draft picks in the first two rounds over the last three years. But two picks there, it's Vancouver and the Islanders. The Vancouver Canucks were screwed so hard by Jim Benning and his ability to get rid of draft capital, and now it's gotten even worse because Jason Dickinson cost a second to get him out of here. Klimovich ain't it, Chief. And hey, maybe Lakaramaki is something. But that isn't nearly enough to prop up this team's future compared to what's coming for everyone else. They are getting lapped, nay, crushed by every single team in this league at the draft. I'm so sick of hearing the GM says the plan is to try and get younger and improve our team year in and year out. That's not a course of action. It's what 31 other GMs and president of hockey operations do every year. So for Vancouver, I love this tweet thread, by the way. Cody, you're an absolute gem. It's crazy to acknowledge just how bad they've been at actually getting younger and actually acquiring draft capital. They say that's the plan, but they don't do it every other team. They don't have the same sort of assertion into the media saying that, yeah, no, we're trying to get younger, we're trying to get younger, we're trying to get younger. Nobody else talks about it as much as Jim Benning did and as Rutherford and Alvin have been doing so far, yet all these other teams, Carolina is a top team, yet they had seven picks in the first two rounds in the last three years. Carolina's drafting really well. All these other teams that are in the Vancouver Canucks territory in the standings, they're drafting pretty well too. And all the other teams that were bad last year, Buffalo, Detroit, Minnesota, Montreal, Ottawa, 10 picks, 10 top 60 picks in the past three years. Vancouver has had two. This is what happens when you focus on the now. Francesco Aquilini. My eyeballs are absolutely fried from staring at elite prospect draft pages and Google Sheets. Cody also includes what the next year's table, or at least the next three years of the tables look like. Only five teams drafting less than the Canucks in the first two rounds over the next three drafts. Boston, Colorado, Florida, Tampa Bay, and Toronto. These teams have five picks each. It's Dallas, Edmonton, Philadelphia, St. Louis, Vancouver, Vegas, Washington, and Winnipeg. By the way, first two rounds over the next three years, that means you have six picks in total. One of the Canucks' second round picks is already gone, which is why they have five. And then you have some teams already who have eight plus picks. Chicago has 10, Anaheim has nine. This is good for these other teams. They're getting younger, but Vancouver? No, it doesn't look like that's really happening here. So... I don't know, man. You want to trade away some good players for draft picks? I don't want to say that you should just trade away Garland for, I don't know, four second round picks or whatever it is. But like, at the same time, man, the Vancouver Canucks, despite saying they've been trying to get younger this entire time, it does not show well when you compare it to the rest of the NHL and how the draft picks have aligned. Sure, they got Jack Studnicka yesterday, who is somewhat of a young guy. He was drafted in 2017, but he's not that young. Like, when you take a look at some of the players that Carolina, for example, is drafting, and I keep on going to Carolina because they have so many picks that you just look at their prospects page and the recent drafts that they have, and you say, darn, every single time, because they have such a good staff when it comes to scouting, and they have so many picks every year because of that. Go back to 2021. Look at this team. They had three second round picks. Scott Morrow, fantastic pick. Hema Salmi, I like him a lot. Koivinen, great pick. You have 2022. Last year, they had Gleb Trikazov as their first pick. That's an absolutely beautiful selection right there. Jarvis, Gundler, Ponomaryev in 2020. Like, some teams just know how to draft and they know how to get younger. Vancouver is not doing that. They get guys that aren't old, but they don't get guys that are actually valuable or that actually grow into valuable players as time goes on. You don't see these Canucks acquisitions becoming absolute studs. I think the most recent one that you could actually say worked out in a way is Connor Garland, but he actually might get traded soon, so let's just toss his name aside for now. Tyler Mott works. I mean, he was a pretty good fourth liner, a superstar fourth liner, but he definitely wasn't a top six, middle six caliber forward. All the other players that the Canucks ended up getting, I mean, talk about 
Travis Dermott, I mean, okay, small sample size, but that's a little bit further out into the future, I feel. Noah Juleson, Lamico, you have other players like Matthew Highmore, even the other betting acquisitions earlier on, like... Sven Berchi, oh, okay, no, Berchi actually was pretty good, I take that back. But either way, the point remains, the team, while getting younger has been the plan, they haven't actually done a good job at doing that because all the other NHL GMs seem to be getting a lot more draft picks and a lot more capital, the Canucks end up giving that away, because, yeah, proper management, eh? Talk to the console your thoughts, though, I hope you enjoyed this Vrishra Shrolls 99, and bye. <laughs>